Hey YouTubers, it's Dansky. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at using the clone tool in Photoshop, that's this one over here, to extend the background of a photo. So if you go over to the left in your tool palette and left click and hold, you get these two. And we're gonna be using the clone stamp tool. And what we wanna do is go up to the top left again and we're gonna select one of these softer brushes here and you can pick a larger size. Okay, so I want to make this a lot bigger now. So the square brackets, uh, the left and right ones, they make it smaller or bigger. So that's a really handy shortcut to use. So I'm working with quite a high res photo here. So I'm gonna make those a bit bigger. Right, so what we're gonna do now is go up to image canvas size and we want to extend our uh, photo to the right so if I click this left part here it's only going to extend the canvas out to the right so let's say uh, 8000 and click OK okay so we've now got this big empty space so we need to extend this out so this kind of part of the photo continues and it um, doesn't doesn't look fake so what we're going to do is this is going to be the trickiest part is we're going to zoom in and start work here. So the shortcut for the clone stamp tool is S. And again, just use those square brackets to adjust the size as you need to. And then what you're going to do is holding the alt key, you'll see you get this little crosshair come up. And what that's doing is it's sampling this area with your selected brush size. So we want to sample somewhere around here where the, the dark part of this wall meets the flat part. So it goes from dark to light. So we want to sample right on there. So holding Alt, just left click to sample and then let go. And as you can see now, I've sampled that area and it will let me paste it somewhere else. So the, you can paste it wherever you like, but the trick to extending is to go down here and line it up as close as you can, and then left click. And that little cross on the left is it will continuously sample. So as I'm moving to the right, you can see where it's sampling. So if I keep going to the right, it will hit the edge of the image and it's basically taken this bit here and that is now over there. So that's a good start. So what we want to do now is again, so we've cloned a bit here, we'll go back, we'll sample it again. And then we'll just tag this on the end. Clone, clone, clone. And again, we hit the edge. And hopefully when you do yours, you can do it a little bit straighter. There's a couple of kinks here, but the trick is to, to do it so it looks believable and doesn't look photoshopped. And you can zoom in even more if you need to, just to make sure it's kind of perfect. And then, okay, so now we're going to sample this bit here. And this is why it's good to use the feathered brush as well, because you can see it's, it's all blending together quite nicely. And you can spend, depending on the extent of your retouching you can spend hours doing this so some professionals extend entire scenes and add windows in and all sorts that you just you'd be amazed how they do it okay so we're going to sample this this bit here now so same principle again just hold alt left click and left click over here to sample and we can draw something like that so that's a pretty quick job, but you get the idea. Something like this, if you can see that there, is quite faint. So rather than extend this out and, you know, kind of have it where it needs to meet the window, which could be quite complicated, I'm actually just going to remove it entirely. So I'm just going to sample anywhere on this wall and simply just drag across. And just do that. A smaller brush and just get rid of it entirely. Okay, now the next step is we want to extend this out. So you can do this by cloning, but there's quite a lot of white space here to fill, so you would be cloning for quite a while. So one way that's a bit of a cheat 
is that you can just create a new layer, select your brush tool over here, pick a nice feathered brush that isn't blue, <laughs> uh, and select the eyedropper tool. Where have you gone? There you are. And just sample the kind of very right edge of this wall here. And what we're going to do with our nice big brush is just fill this area with this solid color. Okay. And then as you get closer, similar to painting in real life, as you get closer to the bits that need a bit more detail, just, just use those square brackets to shrink the brush down. And you can just do a bit more detail work. There we go, and you can see it starts to blend in fairly seamlessly. Now this bit down the bottom, there's a bit more light down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another layer. So we've created our new layer and we're going to go a bit closer to white, almost white, but just slightly off. And we're going to make the brush really big. So at the moment, this seems to be sort of slightly darker here. And then you've got this very light sort of kind of almost like a straight halo along the bottom and it looks a bit fake so we're just gonna on our new layer just blend in a bit of white and obviously I've kind of painted over the other part of the wall now so if we add a mask layer a mask layer a layer mask <laughs> and with our color selectors black we can then just go and remove some of these bits here Okay, so if I show you what I've done now, I'll switch this layer on and off. So you can see there, it's it's really noticeable where I've just not kind of taken this darker color right to the edge. You could take that right to the edge if you wanted to. You didn't have to have the white bit along the bottom. But I've just gone with that. So it's just a bit of a highlight. And you can go in and kind of just, just touch up any bits that remain. Just so the fade doesn't doesn't kind of bleed onto any other part of the image that it shouldn't. Okay, so it's it's quite noticeable now when you when you flick it on and off like that. And I'm just going to go in and just soften this line here. You can just see a little bit of a line remaining. And you can add other layers and add highlights in places and and bits and bobs. Um, and in reality, this photo might not be extended this much, but this is just to give you an idea of, of how you'd go about extending it. Okay, well, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give me a little like below. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Have you got any other techniques that you use to extend complex scenery? And I'll see you in my next video.